All right, welcome back to another video. We're just heading into the bike shop. It's Monday. Um, just got back from Taupo. We did around Taupo Saturday, and then me and Jackson went for a mountain bike ride Sunday. I didn't film any of it. It's a 7 a.m. start for Taupo these days. Super, super early start, and to try and do like the elite race, well, which was the elite race at 7 a.m. start, which means like, I, you know, every time I do a video, it takes me an extra half an hour to do anything. So I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to film today without a filmer. Yeah, I've got a whole load of like upgrades and stuff that I've got done to a few of my bikes. So we're going to head inside the bike shop, which is actually closed today, and we're going to have a look at them. Right, so if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that I actually have a plethora of bikes. And now with the new addition of the mountain bike, I think I'm running, I think I personally own eight bikes. So I've got my time trial bike there. I've got the Scott Foil GT40 just sitting up there, which is pretty much ready to be rebuilt, but I'm not sure what I'm gonna do or whether I'm gonna rebuild it. It just sits there pretty much all day. And then I've also got my G2 gravel bike as well. That's three, and then I've got my wind space road bike. I've got the spare team bike that lives in my house. That's five. My track bike, sit. And I've also got one of the spare Panarellos that never got sent out. So that's seven bikes that I own at the moment. And then I, when I had my Cannondale, I did have eight. So we're gonna start with the time trial bike. Um, I put a picture up of what it used to look like when I got this all ready for nationals. And I've done quite a few changes since then. Obviously, I'm not gonna be running this front eastern wheel. I use my 75, but it's currently on the track bike. But the first thing you'll see that I've changed, I've actually, with the new rules, been able to go out a little bit. So I've got um, new bars, they're kind of like an S ski bend, and I've kind of pushed them in together so they're quite close. I'm also still running the Durace shifters, so they're just single button shifters. And so I think from the last bars that I had on there, it's like another almost an inch that it comes out, so it feels a lot better. I was really sitting quite far forward, and when I had my arms on the bars, my hand was actually sitting like here, not actually holding the bar, whereas now I'm actually being able to hold the bar and get fairly aero and then the next upgrade i've done is i've got an x caddy um, 165 power meter on here which is what all the boys on the team are running and i've also gone full one by as you can see the front derailleur has been taken off so it's got a 58 tooth on the front yeah 165 crank and i've had to put put an entirely new chain on there because obviously the old chain was not going to work for that yeah i'm not training for anything crazy the only last thing i'm going to do on this bike is probably going to go back to the ism saddle that i tried out before club nationals I just chucked this one on because I'd been like using this and I'd used it a couple of times. And I was like almost there on the ISM one, but it just, just didn't feel right. And I just didn't have enough weeks to like actually train on it to get it good to actually be able to race on. So I think I'm gonna change the saddle and then that'll pretty much be my setup. And then I'll run obviously the 75 front wheel. And I'm thinking of doing a Medi and because all my front tires are black and this is obviously the tan wheel, I think I'm gonna do a Medi Hartley Brown and just get the old Sharpie out and sharpie out that so it looks all black so it'll look a lot better. All right, and this is what I've been doing on the G2. Don't mind all the sawdust. We've just been putting up a whole load more like black slat walls um, at the shop. So yeah, that'll be uh, clean soon. So on the G2, we've done a few different upgrades. I've um, gone with the Schwalbe G1 Bytes. Before this, I'd run just the normal Schwalbe G1s. You have like quite a small grip. I wanna do some more like proper like off-roading stuff and a lot more sand work. These are the 45 mils, but they almost measure on these wheels because they're so wide to like a 47 or a 48. So they're pretty big dogs. And like this has so much clearance on this G2. Obviously I'm running these tubeless, so I chucked the, like some fancy muck off valves and stuff on there. So it's got the green one there and on the back. And then the biggest upgrade, I've gone fully internal as you can see. We now have no more cables at the front. We're running like the proper wind space bar. This is the exact same bar that I have on my wind space road bike. Um, I need to get a new um, bolt for that because I lost the old one with the actual like nice flush one. But yeah, these are the same. So this is a 115 by 40. So I use a 125 by 38 on my roadie. But I went a little bit wider, but I just wanted like more traditional bars. These are the bars that I took off the gravel bike when I was running it externally cabled. They were just like, these are zip specific um, like gravel bars. So they are 42 and then they flare out to like a 44. You can see they flare out quite a considerable amount. And then it's a 120, just some random stem that I'd found. So now we're fully internal. We're a little bit narrower. I feel like I could definitely go a little bit narrower on the gravel bike. And my favorite bit is now that I can actually run my shifters straight because of the flare it almost had my shifters sitting out on in like an angle like this and i really didn't like the look of it so now it just kind of looks like a normal traditional road bike but it's actually a gravel machine 
Oh, fuck. But yeah, that's kind of like a little bit of the updates of these two bikes. Obviously, having eight bikes, you have just constant moving parts. Bikes are constantly breaking down or something needs to be changed on it. So yeah, I thought I'd just give you guys a little bit of an update of what's going on with the fleet at the moment. So event-wise, like for TT, I'm not actually looking at anything major. I just want to try and do a decent time at our like club 40k time trial, which is on the 20th of January, I believe. So that's why I'm going to start riding this maybe once or twice a week. Because the thing with the time trial bike is if you don't ride it, it's really, really, really uncomfortable. So I'm just going to try and get out a couple rides on this a week so that when I get to that, I feel... Um, relatively comfortable on it and then with the G2 now that I've kind of like stopped training properly like for the road and stuff I really want to jump back onto it the G2 is kind of like what got me back into cycling so I don't want to neglect the fact that I do like riding on the gravel I would have done the gravel race at Taupo instead of the road race except obviously this thing had no bars on it the other day so I couldn't actually ride it and I was literally leaving at like 8 or 9 the next morning so there's no way it was going to get built Right, so now I can take these two bikes home, there's no need for them to be at the shop, so I'm going to take the G2 and the TT bike on the car, and then, and then when I do get home, I have a few extra bits and bobs that I got for my track bike, so obviously if you guys watched the last track video, I was super under geared, so I bought some new gears and stuff, so we'll have a look at those when I get back to the studio. So yeah, the studio is slowly getting very, very, very full, so we've got the Pinarello, Cipollini, the G2, Got my T1500 race bike. I've got my giant Trinity TT bike. Got the spare wind space bike. I got another one of the Devo boys bikes. I got my brand new Trek Fuel EX. Sister's track bike, an old chapter two frame, set of wheels, and then a lot of set of wheels. And then all of the stuff there for Copeland. So yeah, she's getting pretty packed. So yeah, I mentioned briefly that I um, upgraded my gears and stuff. So I obviously saw a lot of the track guys um, that I follow on Instagram and stuff, working with old Velo bikes. I had a quick look on the website, did a few calculations, called George and called Kurgi, and ended up going with, I think this is a 54 tooth um, Velo bike chainring for my track bike. So I've got that. Also sent me a couple stickers, which is pretty cool. And then I also got, what's this one, a 16 tooth. So if I want to do like a longer race on the track, I got a 16 tooth there. And then I also got for the sprints, uh, what is this, a 14 tooth. So obviously I already have the 15 tooth. So yeah, I thought 16, 14, 15, and then I've got a 51 on there and a 54 should kind of get me through for the moment. And yeah, this chain ring looks pretty sick as well. All right, we're going to head out for a quick gravel ride. I think Dom's coming and Caleb as well. So we're going to grab one of these laser helmets. I usually use this one when I'm running the gravel. This is the G Genesis, I believe. It's just a lot more ventilated and I don't really need the aero gains of the Vento for that. But yeah, the gravel bike's pretty much ready to go. The only thing I wasn't able to get um, that I needed was that top bolt, the, like the flat one. They didn't have any flat ones at the shop. All ready to go with the new bar. It's got the Garmin on there, GoPro mount. And the only thing I couldn't find was uh, the actual like little metal bit that you put over where the um, cable used to be. But I just got a little um, wind space sticker on there which still looks pretty tidy. I've only used those new tires um, once on like a tiny little like 45 minute ride. So I'll be interested to see what they're actually like. But yeah, the weather's actually quite nice now. Marcin. It was raining, it's been raining and raining and raining for ages. Um, but yeah, sun's come out so we're gonna go out and play.